Hi, I'm Paul Dye, and today I want to talk to you about making little adjustments on a kit airplane or a plans built airplane. No matter how good kits get, and they are extremely good these days, there's always the possibility that something might not quite fit. Um, with the pre-punched CNC cut kits, almost everything fits together perfectly. Matter of fact, if you're putting pieces together with Clecos and they don't go together properly, in nine ti 99 times out of 100, you are putting it together wrong because they just work. But if you're building an older kit, something that needs a little bit of drilling, a little bit of fitting, a little bit of uh, adjustment here and there, you're going to run into places that, that, that need a little art. There's engineering and there's art. And engineering is something, uh, something that can affect the fit of, uh, or the, uh, the, the, the structure, the strength of the structure. Uh, art is something that, how does it look? Does it really affect the strength or is it just going to look better if I do it this way or that way? You may not have the skill to determine what is art and what is engineering. In that case, call your kit company. So let me talk about a few of the kind of adjustments that we commonly see, especially with some of the kits that came out in the 70s, the 80s, maybe the 90s, that, that require you to drill your own holes, to make things fit properly, and, uh, and to make skins and ribs come together tightly. So one of the things you're going to run into is very, very simple, a very easy skill, is that you might find that you'll have some flanges which are over or under bent. A lot of times they can be put into a, 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 a bending machine and somebody doesn't get them quite bent properly. The easiest way to adjust that is with a hand seamer. So you can just put it on here and, and do a little bit of extra bending to make things go. Uh, if they're over bent, you can straighten them out a little bit. But make sure that, that if you're doing it, do it gently. Try and go all the way up to the corner because if you, these corners will put stress risers in your point and you'll end up with kind of a crooked flange if you don't, don't do it all at once. So using a hand seamer is a great way to do that, straighten things out. Another task that we run into all the time uh, in, in, in older, older kits and even newer kits is the need to, to straighten out ribs. When ribs are, are, are formed on a, on a form block or with a hydraulic press or a, or a hydrostatic press, Frequently, they, they go together, and this isn't a full rib, this is just something I can use as an example with a, a flange. There's a tendency to, that they, they sometimes become a little bit uh, potato chip shaped. Um, you can fix that with a pair of fluting pliers. And a pair of fluting pliers simply has, uh, as a way to put a little bit of a kink in the rib, and, if, and by doing so you actually shorten up the rib flange a little bit and by shortening that flange you're going to bend it a little bit. So now by, by shortening that up I've actually created a little bit of rock into this rib. So in the old days and on even some kits today um, you need to grab all the wing ribs, all the ribs for your elevators, for your horizontal or your stabilizers, all of the all the tail pieces Put them all in a box, take them inside, sit down in front of the TV, show, uh, TV with a nice coffee table in front of you and start fluting ribs. That's an adjustment that is very common. I've also had kits where I didn't need to do any of the fluting, it was all done beforehand, which is really nice. Then up comes the topic of shims. Sometimes you'll have a skin that's supposed to fit perfectly on a rib and there's a little bit of a gap. or uh, a fuselage skin which has to fit over a set of formers or bulkheads and you'll find that the skin is a millimeter too long for the distance you have to go and so at one point there'll be just a little bit of a gap. You can fill that with a shim generally because it's just a flange and you want to sometimes take that shim and taper it so you just use a piece of aluminum, just common 032 or whatever is required, probably something 032 and you can actually taper the shims with your sanding wheel, with your disc, so that, it, so that you, you go from a place where you need the shim to a place where you don't need the shim. Um, and, it, and it'll fit and it'll take up that space. What you don't want to do is let the rivets pull the pieces together and have a pillow between them because that's a bad fit. It's not going to do good for the structure and it's not going to look good either. So 
Knowing how and when to shim is a good deal. You can also sometimes get away with what we call a wet shim, uh, which is essentially mixing up some epoxy with some thickener, putting it in there, and then, <clears throat> then doing your riveting, and that will harden in there to create that space filler that you need. That's something that if you're going to do, you probably want to check with your kit manufacturer to see if it's going to be allowed structurally, and you also want to do some practice. So make up some practice scrap parts and try it before you, you mess around with wet shims. Now there's one other technique that I'll show you if you're building a, a, a much older kit or you're, you've built your own, had to build your own uh, bulkheads, sometimes you're going to find that the fuselage skins just don't want to fit really nicely onto the bulkheads and you're going to have some gaps and you're looking at it and see you're going to need a mountain of shims, you're going to need all sorts of different thicknesses and it's just going to be a nightmare trying to put it together. In that case, there's a little technique we call the slinky flange. It sounds pretty, uh, pretty dire. What you're going to end up doing is literally cutting the flanges off of your bulkhead. Before you do that, you might want to check with the kit manufacturer and fly this idea past them. In many cases, a slinky flange works. A slinky flange is a piece of flange material, a right angle material of the same thickness as the, as the bulkhead that you've cut. Um, you you bend, a, bend it into an angle so you now have a flange and then you cut little gores out of it. So you can take a look and you can see that I can bend this to fit like the shape of a fuselage. Um, and what you'll do is you'll put the flange in place, or you'll put the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the body of the bulkhead in place, and then you can take this flange and put it up next to it, measure carefully, and fit this perfectly to your skin. And then, after you fit that perfectly to the skin, you can drill holes, and I would pre-drill the holes in the slinky flange, and then you drill that to the bulkhead. And now you've made a perfect fit flange to bulkhead to skin. Things you have to watch out for, you need to have these gores fairly close to each other or this bend will become faceted. You'll have flat, 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 flat in between. So this is an inch apart, probably should be about three quarters of an inch apart with this um, O25 skin. The other thing is you've got to watch your edge distances. It's better to err on the side of too long and too long on the flange so that you make sure you've got appropriate edge distance on your holes here and up here and on the flange. So those are the things to think about if you're going to go after a slinky flange. We find we only have to do that on much, much older designs. Things like the early RVs, um, some of the early uh, 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 other metal airplanes, and, uh, and, but it's a, it's, a, it's a tool to have in your toolkit. There are many other adjustments that you might have to make. Older builders, your local EAA chapter, and your manufacturer are great resources when something doesn't fit. What you don't want to do if something doesn't fit is charge ahead. You're going to end up with an ugly airplane and it may not be strong. So consult your resources, take a break, go to the beach, think about the problem, consult your resources again, and come up with a solution that fits your particular situation. Thanks again for Aircraft Spruce sponsoring this series, and thanks to you for watching. We got that one on tape. I figure you did.